Uh, today I felt like the Lord said to shift my whole message and teach on the spirit of fear. And that God, Jesus Christ has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of what? A sound mind, a disciplined mind. And that, that, that fear, I don't know about you, but I had struggled a lot with fear, and I still have to be very careful. And, um, but, but that fear tries to come in and paralyze you and tries to get you stagnant and to pull back and to withdraw and to play it safe all the time. And that's what, we're, that's what I'm going to discuss. So in the Old Testament, we know that the way Jesus set the people free in Exodus 12, and I'm just going to touch on this because I'm, I, I, I'm not going to get into that. I changed my mind. But, but in Exodus 12, it talks about the people, when, when the Lord gave them direction through Moses to, to leave Egypt, everybody had to put blood on the lintels, on the doorpost, right? And so, and that was the thing that the angel of death was not going to come to, um, you know, take out these people that didn't believe. And so, um, you know, we have, when we have accepted Jesus into our heart, see, our spirit man is automatically born again. But how many of you, how many of you, when you got saved, you automatically just did everything that you were just serving the Lord and you obeyed him and you did everything wonderfully in him? Yeah, that's what I thought. So our spirit man is automatically born again, but our soul needs to grow and be redeemed, and we have to be discipled. So there's discipling that takes place, and there's deliverance that takes place. And so we are a church that believes in the full gospel, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, cast out devils, and raise the dead. We believe that Jesus Christ came to set us free. We believe that Jesus has given us a way out, an escape. He's given us a way to identify root issues and to not get stuck in that place of whatever it is you're battling. I promise you, God has a way of escape. That's what 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, that he has given to each of us a way of escape from whatever you're going through period. You know, the enemy will say to you, this is too hard. You're stuck with this. But I'm going to tell you, he's a liar. The Bible calls him in John chapter 8 that he is the father of lies. And his job is to make you believe that he is greater. His job is to make you believe that, that um, this is a bunch of baloney and that the devil doesn't even exist. That's his job. And we buy into it at times. And that's why we have to know what the Word of God says. So Jesus Christ always had a plan. There was always a plan of escape for us. And in First John, it says that Jesus, for this very purpose, Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the enemy. So we know that God demonstrated this protection and deliverance of the blood of Jesus for us. And that we know that just one drop, just one drop scares and terrifies the enemy. Now, again, as I say to you, my, my focus isn't the enemy. My focus is the Lord. But we have to, the Bible says to, uh, that we are to be aware of the wiles, of the schemes of the enemy. We have to know what the enemy does, how he, how he tries to attack us. And, and Holy Spirit wants us to know that greater is he that's in us and he that's in the world. And that we, we, um, we have the power of God within us. So, but what does he do? He tries to get us distracted. He tries to get us to focus on other people and blame everybody for our problems. Never take ownership. God forbid we look at our own stuff but point our finger at everybody else and not look here and say what have I done Lord you know yeah we're good people but we all blow it we all have stuff and it's nothing to be ashamed of it's just own it we were listening to a testimony uh, about um, Brian Brian Johnson and he was talking about the fear and the struggle he had that he had a nervous breakdown and um, he said that part of the problem was he didn't know that he even was struggling for a while, right? And he said that he stuffed his emotions. What he did for the longest time was, oh, that doesn't bother me. Just keep pushing it down, pushing it down, pushing it down, pushing it down until, until he's having a nervous breakdown. And see, we can be religious and we can go through the motion and bless God, everything's awesome, everything's great. And, and yes, we have to watch the confessions of our mouth. But if you have an issue, deal with it. I mean, my Lord, none of us walk on water here yet. So God wants us to say, hey, I am having a struggle. I am having a problem with a certain situation, you know. I mean, we all do it. Uh, because, you know, I know like in, in some of the churches that we were affiliated with and, you know, it was wrong if you said you had anything going on. You, you really couldn't go up for prayer. You got in trouble for it. So, but that's not, that's not God. 
so the Lord wants us to, to, to really understand who he is. So now, uh, Marissa, I had sent you a bunch of scriptures. Awesome. So we're going to go to Matthew 26. We're going to shift gears a little bit. We are going to do a teaching on the covenant, the blood covenant, and, and for you to understand really our blood covenant and the power of it and that it's eternal and God never breaks covenant. It's not a contract with God. That's why he watches over his word to perform it, that he's faithful and true, that we can learn to trust him and get into that place knowing that God has a way of escape for us and that he'll help us live a life, a victorious life, even in the midst of issues, even with problems, like Chris said, you know, we all have stuff, and life happens, you know, but it's, it's, it's so many times we automatically think, oh, it's our fault, and it could be, but not always, right? So we're going to identify that today, and so in Matthew 26, 41, in the Amplified, it says, watch and pray, all of you must keep awake, give strict attention, be cautious and active, watch and pray that you may not come into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. So what are we watching and praying about? We are watching and guarding our soul. We're watching to see what the enemy, just keep the scriptures up there for a bit. We're watching to see what the enemy, um, like, you know, like we'll hear, we all hear stuff all day long, right? And so uh, let's say you're with battling with fear or any kind of temptation, you'll constantly be bombarded with that lie with that arrow, that the arrows that were coming against you, uh, you know, that you're always battled with fear or that you're always going to be afraid or, you know, whatever it is you're, you're battling with. So we're watching to see what's being thrown at us, but that's where we have to intercept it with the word of God. Listen, part, the main thing about deliverance is, uh, you know, demons are easy. We can cast them out. They're not a problem because they're afraid of the word, the name of Jesus and the power of the blood. And we can cast them out. But if you don't know how to keep your vessel free, if you don't know how to meditate on the word, if you don't know that, that yeah, you're going to get uh, tempted, there's going to be torment, but it's up to you to intercept it like Wonder Woman did. You know, she had those things on her. Yeah, intercept it with the word of God. And, you know, it's like what, you know, the, the, the thing, the way the enemy works is, you're going to be sick and have this issue forever, or you know, it, you're, you're going to die, or you're going to have this issue. And it's like, oh, you know, when we get scared, right? I mean, we're human. If we hear, or if we get a, a diagnosis, or if we hear something, it, we can get scared. I, I'm not at that place yet where I haven't you know, gotten scared. Like I'll hear something at first, and then it's like, wait a minute. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of sound mind. Lord, here's what your word says. We intercept it, but if you keep focusing on that and meditating on it, you war with the word of God. All right? So we have to watch over those things. Fear comes after us aggressively, and we cannot be passive about it. Any kind of sin, let me just say this, pornography, sexual sin, uh, you know, anger, violence, uh, whatever it is you're struggling with comes after us aggressively. And so many times we take a passive approach. We can't. You're getting your behinds kicked. You have got to take a stand with the Word. Here's what the Word of God says. Lord, and then, then you get prayer. You, you know, you, you, you bring it into the light. You say, I'm, I'm having a hard time with this. I need help. You know, don't keep it. That, that shame thing wants us to hide. God is saying, bring it, out, bring it out into the light. Religion says, don't do it. You're a leader. You're this person. You're this far along in God. You shouldn't have a problem. You need to tell that voice to shut up. Because the bottom line is, I got to a place where I was sick and tired of being 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 afraid. And I couldn't take this fear of man thing and this torment of panic and, and fear. And I was afraid to step out. I was afraid to do anything. And, you know, you act like, oh, yeah, I'm good. Everything's fine. Meanwhile, it's like everything inside you. I'm a nervous breakdown. But the thing is, you have to just be honest. And so... 1 John 7, no, I'm sorry, 1 John 1. I have all these little things here so I can find the scripture fast because my computer wouldn't work. How unusual. <laughs> so it says here, but if we're living, 1 John 1, 7, but if we're really living and walking in the light as he himself is in the light, we have true unbroken fellowship with one another. And 
and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanses, removes us from all sin and guilt, keeps us cleansed from sin in all its form and its manifestation. And then if I jump down to verse nine, it says, if we, if we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sin, he is faithful and, and just, true to his own nature and promises, and will forgive our sin, dismiss our lawlessness, and continuously cleanse us from all unrighteousness, everything not in conformity to his will and purpose, thought and action. And, and so it's, if he's faithful and just to cleanse us of our sin. And so walking in the light, bring things into the light because light dispels darkness. The enemy wants you to hide your stuff. God is saying, bring it into the light. And, and so you know what? You get that one uh, person that you can confide in. I have an issue here. I'm battling with something, you know, and, and we bring it out into the light. See, we diffuse the enemy. The enemy wants you to think you're going to have a Linda Blair episode. For those of you who are old enough to, wa to have watched, uh, what was the name of that movie? Exorcist. That's not the way it is. You know, now you have sometimes, if, if you're involved in heavy occult stuff, it could be. But, but most of it's not like that. And so people are afraid. Well, I don't want to deal with this stuff. Well, guess what? You're, you're dealing with it because you're struggling and you're not getting free. So either address it or stay in that place. It's your choice. And so I got to the place where I couldn't take it anymore. And like I quoted to you before, 1 John 4, 4 says, he is the greater one. And I want to read it to you in the Amplified in 1 John 4, 4. I think I have it on there. Okay, little children, you are of God and you belong to him. We belong to him and have already defeated and overcome the ancients of the Antichrist because he who lives in you is greater and mightier than he who is in the world. See, we got the greater one. We have the goods. We have the power of the name of Jesus. We have the power of the blood. And so when we are struggling in this place with fear, let's say you're battling a fear issue and you have gotten a bad report. Well, everything is coming at you from every which end to, to say, you're going to die. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. And it, yes, it does get scary. But I know that Jesus said that he came to set us free. He died on the cross so that we can live. The Bible says in Psalms that, you know, I shall live and not die, and I shall declare the glory of the Lord. You know, we, we, we stand and we get a word from the Lord. The Lord wants us to get into that contemplative prayer, you know, just waiting on him. I feel like so many of us just go into that first stage where we're praying, but we're telling him everything that's going on in life and this and that, and, but we don't sit to wait to hear what he's saying. What, what, what's, the di what's the direction that the Holy Spirit's given us? What's the word of the Lord that he's given you to hold on to for freedom? Because that's how we stay free. You know, the enemy's technique is through lies and torment. And so you don't want to fill yourself up with stuff that's going to cause that fear and torment to, to take you out, right? So 2 Timothy 1.7, and I shared this before, God has not given us a spirit of fear. It's a spirit that you're addressing. A spirit of fear, but of power, love, a sound. It's a disciplined mind. We have the mind of Christ. And so um, God wants us to get a revelation of that and to know that, wait a second, if I'm battling this fear thing, now we have logical fear, like if you're going to run across the street and you see a, a tractor trailer coming, you might get scared. Ah, you know, the truck's going to come against you. Well, that's logical fear. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this fear that keeps you anxious, that a lot of times you don't sleep at night or, or, or during the day you get this icky feeling in your stomach because you're getting afraid about something. Anybody, does that ever happen to anybody here? It, or you're not going to get your job, or, or you're never going to amount to anything, or you're never going to get a fear, uh, uh, a pay increase, you know? There's all these different things that it's only up to us to shut the mouth of the enemy, to say, no, I, I reject this. And we're going to go through some deliverance later. And, and what I want to do, if you are struggling with fear, panic, or anxiety, we're going to have a prayer team here. We're going, to, we're going to cast a spirit out of you if you're battling with that. We'll take authority over it. But see, you have to stand firm in the word. We, we have got to meditate on the word. In Joshua 1.9, I didn't, I didn't give this to you guys, but Joshua 1.9, um, Joshua was a mighty warrior. Joshua hung out with Moses. Joshua warred, and I mean, 
you know, powerful man of God. But look, let's look at what he said that God admonished him in, in Joshua chapter one. If I can only find it. Okay. Joshua one, it says here, and he says it to him three times. He said, be strong and confident and of good courage for you shall cause his people to inherit the land, which I swore to their fathers. Only be strong and very courageous that you may do according to all law, which Moses, my servant, commanded to you. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. And it says that this book, you shall meditate on it day and night that you will observe and do according to all that's written. Then you shall make your way prosperous and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. Have I not commanded you be strong, vigorous and very courageous. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. See, we all get that. We all get afraid when we're venturing into something new. If you think you're going to wait until everything is perfect to make a move, you have got another thing coming because that's usually not the way it works. And that's where you get that word from the Lord. You're trusting the Lord. The Lord's showing you the steps to take, but don't allow fear to hold you back where you have so much regret because you didn't do anything because you were too afraid of failing. You were too afraid of making a move, too afraid of, of stepping out and taking a risk. Because faith is act. I mean, God, we activate, or I always say this, faith is the currency of heaven, and fear activates Satan. Fear activates that oppression that he releases against us, and he knows how to do his job well, but when you stand, and, and he said, you know, he, he's like, I, you know, when, where I, uh, the lady that mentored me, she said, that old slew foot. He doesn't have any teeth in his mouth and he has no, no claws. He'll just gum you to death, you know? So, but he, there's, there's authority there. But see, if you don't know who you are, we were singing about it today. If you don't know who you are, you don't know that, wait a second, I have the greater one in me and you better back down. And he might be in your face doing this, but he stops, I promise you. We, we've been in many deliverance services where they totally have backed down. And we have seen and heard crazy things in our deliverance sessions, let me tell you, but God. So our flesh wants to keep us feeling defeated. Our flesh wants to say, you need to stay in self-pity or depressed or, you know, things aren't ever going to happen. You have, to, you, you have to snap yourself out of that. And we have a choice. I mean, you, you know, you, you come to a service or you can hear something. And, but, but know that that thing wants to cycle you down. And so God is saying, I want you to trust in me with all your heart. I want you to lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge me. And, and I'll direct your path. And so one of the things about developing your faith and not allowing fear to overtake you is by being the doer of the word. We can sit here and complain and moan and groan until Jesus comes home, and you will stay that way, I promise you. But if you want change, see, we, we, have, to, we have to want to move on. I, I don't know about you. There's areas in my life I want to move on. I don't want to stay. I don't want to stay stuck here. I'm like, God, you know what? I'm moving on. There is a place here that I'm battling or I'm struggling with this thing or whatever it is. Lord, your word says this. Now I'm waiting upon the Lord. I am, I'm listening to hear what he's saying. And I know that one of the things he's saying is we have to know how to hear his heartbeat. Uh, Terry sang a song, you know, about that, about getting on up, up on his lap and listening to the heartbeat of the Lord. You know, sometimes it's so easy to just get a word from somebody. Could you just pray for me and give me a word? You know, I love that. Just give me a word. Just tell me. I, I do love my husband. <laughs> love your wife. <laughs> so... I bless you, honey. <laughs> um, now, now you made me lose my train of thought. <laughs> get a word, get a word, get a word from God. <laughs> so, but, but we can all do this. We are powerful. I want you all to know how powerful each and every one of you are here. Really, I mean, we are, we are lionesses and lions, you know. I mean, we, we can roar, you know. We have the power of God in us. And the Bible says in Matthew eleven twelve, and I want to read it to you. It says that the violent taketh by force. I always, it says here in um, Matthew eleven twelve, from the days of John the Baptist until the present time, 
The kingdom of heaven has endeared, endured violent assault, and violent men and women seize it by force as a precious prize, a share in the heavenly kingdom is sought with the most ardent zeal and intense exertion. We are the ones, we seize what's ours by force. We don't just say, oh, well, you know, this is my lot in life, baloney. That's not the truth. Our, our, our promises are, the promises are yes and amen, and God watches over his word to perform it. If you start feeling fearful or worried, you have to aggressively confront the enemy. A lot of times I'll just say to the Lord, why, why am I getting so afraid? What's going on here, Lord? Cause sometimes, you know, like, I don't know if it happens to you. I don't know. Sometimes I can't put my finger on it. I don't know. I'm like, why am I getting scared? I don't know what this problem. Sometimes I'm discerning something, but other times I have no clue. <laughs> I just don't know what it is. And I'm this fear thing. And it could just be the enemy oppressing, right? And so I'll ask questions and I'll wait and say, Lord, is it something I've done? Do I have an offense? Am I harboring unforgiveness towards somebody? See, these are little, little snakes and little, little issues that the enemy, what he does is there's open doors. And so that allows him to come in to attack us. So what he'll do is there's circumstances, there's things that we've gotten upset over, or, or maybe you've gotten angry with someone and you have all in your heart. See, we have to close that door. Right. Ask Holy Spirit, Lord, is there anything that I'm not aware of? Brian Johnson, you should listen to his message about how the Lord had to set him free, how he had to, he didn't recognize that he was harboring, uh, you know, all this um, stuff. He's stuffed and stuffed and stuffed and stuffed. And many of us can do that because sometimes it's easier not to deal with it, right? It's like, oh, Lord, I don't want to deal with this now. But we stuff and we stuff and, and then it's going to come out one way or another. And so that's the thing. So, Lord, why am I acting this way? You know, or, or, you know, why am I worrying? What am I afraid of? And a lot of times, like, you know, Lord, I'm not trusting you. And then I'll just get into that place of, of worship because we all go through it. There's times that I can be like, yeah, you know, like, you know, Deborah here, huh? let's take the army. And then the next day, I want to just throw myself off a cliff, you know, because I'm getting scared. Does that ever happen to you, right? You get like, I'm like, what is wrong today? But then I have to say, wait a minute, Lord, your word says that, right. that greater is he that's in me. Lord, your word says I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. And I'll start worshiping and, and then I get that peace back, you see. But the enemy wants to see, he, he, he just does what he does. But it's up to us to know who we are. It's up to us to take that stand and say, no, I reject it. And so uh, fear, it, you know, is also, you know, is something that, I think for a lot of us, like same with rejection, because I really wanted to speak on rejection because they all work together. You know, if you're alive and you're human, you've been rejected. Right. And so, but how many of us have stayed locked in that place of rejection and, and, and fear is very closely associated with rejection. And even like you were talking about, my husband was talking about that spirit of adoption. And, um, you know, one of the things about that spirit of adoption is it, if, if you don't believe that you are a son or a daughter, if you think you have to earn it, that, that's going to hinder you. It's, it's by faith. You cannot intellectualize the spirit realm. It's by faith. Lord, here's what your word says. And then Holy Spirit, as you meditate on the word, he starts shifting your mindset. It's just the way it is. If you, if you try to deal with this logically, you're, it's going to take a while. <laughs> Because it's spirit to spirit. But there's also, a, a, in Deuteronomy 23, we're going to have John and Cheryl come and, and minister on this because the Lord's given them a lot of revelation on it, about a bastard spirit. The Bible says that if you've been illegitimate or there's illegitimacy in your family, the, and the King James it literally calls it a ba bastard spirit, there's a generational curse that goes down 10 generations. Now, thank God for the power of the blood because we renounce it and break its assignment over our family line. But here's the deal. What happens is one of the things that it says about it in that portion of Scripture, it prevents you from entering into the tabernacle of the Lord. In other words, where you're, you're not able to enter in and experience the covenant or the blessings of the Lord, not because God didn't provide a way for you, but because your mindset is that you'll always be that one that's always looking for the crumbs, that you'll always be that one on the outside in. So, so these are things God has a remedy for everything. And that's the beautiful thing. You know, God has not, in Romans 8, 15 says, for you have not received the spirit of, of bondage, again, to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. God is revealing to us 
by his word, that we are joint heirs with him. We have that authority. We have that power. And, and Jesus will always defeat. You're like totally paralyzed. Oh my God. And you're, you know, and then you leave and then you want to beat yourself up afterwards because you're so aggravated that now everything came back to you. Fear paralyzes. And, and so um, when fear is an operation, we're, we're in bondage. We're subject to that torment. But the Lord said, you don't have to have that. You don't have to experience that. You know, the Bible talks about faith in Hebrews chapter 11. Um, well, let me go to Hebrews 2. First, Hebrews 2.14, I love this. It says, um, Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he will destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, Amen. and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. <laughs> And so I'll read it to you, the Amplified, and I'm going to tell you what that word destroy means. It says, since therefore these his children share in flesh and blood in the physical nature of human beings, he himself in a similar manner partook of the same nature uh, by going through death, he might bring to naught and make of no effect him who had the power of yeah. death that had the devil. And so, uh, and that we are free from this bondage. But when you look up the word destroy, it means unemployed, inactive, in And so meditating on the word is extremely powerful. I am talking to you out of experience because I had really struggled with this. I'm telling you. And I was afraid to, to get up and talk. I, I, you know, no way I wanted to do this. And so, but God, and so God has the plan. What's that area of fear that you are struggling with the most is probably the area that God wants you to operate in. Right? So what's that area? I mean, here from, from when I was in grade school, I didn't want to, I was always afraid to, to speak in public. And this is what the Lord has me doing. So, you know, faith, we have to, we have to develop our faith. And the more you meditate on the word, that's how your faith is built up. All right. Now, I know I'm not sharing anything to you that, that you are not aware of, but when you are really battling with fear, one of the things today that we'll do, and I'll pray with you, uh, is, uh, repent. over my mind and I forbid you from being in operation three then I'll, I'll I'll decree the word Lord your word says you've not given me a spirit of fear but of power love and of sound mind Lord I thank you I thank you for a peace that passes all understanding I thank you Lord you know and this is how we do it. now I've had to have deliverance where you know a lot of times people will say well Christian can't have a, a spirit well I cast them out all the time <laughs> that's I beg to differ with you because we're not possessed but a lot of times from previous, uh, you know, from our previous lifestyle, there's doors that have been opened up that need to be closed. 
And so, listen, I just said, to, I said, God, I'll do whatever you say. I just want freedom. Amen. I'm not going to get this, this religious, uh, you know, uh, theological doctrine as to why. Are you battling and have you had freedom? That's just the bottom line. You want freedom? Then we're going to deal with this. I'm not going to have a dissertation about this or a debate. You want freedom? We'll pray for you. You want to stay where you're at? Keep your arguments. That's where I'm at at this point, to be honest with you. I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> and I've seen too many people live in bondage when they didn't have to. Then I've seen too many people gloriously get set free. And Jesus came to set the captives free. And so that's my hope and that's my desire. And I know that's my husband's. We, we love seeing freedom. We love seeing bondages broken. You know, I was bound. I remember saying to my husband, and I, I said to him, don't you dare respond to me. I said, oh, my God, I can't believe how who strengthens me period basta I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me and my life slowly turned around and and just that that the fear so then there was fear and there was depression there was rebellion you know rebellion and rejection work together there was this whole you know grouping spirits work together there was a whole grouping that that the Lord had to set me free from but here's the thing it's not complicated because you don't have to figure it out. God does it for you. You just surrender. That's the beauty of the Lord. It's not a complicated. The gospel's simple. It really is simple. And the Lord needs us free to minister. We want to bring those people in. You know, we, I've been ministering a lot to people, really making it my point to, to minister the gospel to people. You know, it, it, make that a goal each week that, that you're going to zero out some person and minister the gospel. Bring them to church. Get them cleaned up here. Cast those suckers out. Person, the spirits that are in them come into you see that there's soul ties that happen the the Bible's I mean you know the world's saying that you can this transgender thing it's not that we don't have heart for the people that are struggling but now they're trying to say you can't even pray for people like that uh, homosexual agenda uh, read the Bible in, in Genesis male and female I mean that's to me it's just so so there in your face and then you have people that want to argue with you and tell you that it's not biblical I mean, that is biblical, but it's not. Listen, God has guidelines in it not to be, you know, this, oh, you know, prudish group of people that are going to be self-righteous. That's not it. It's the love of God that we speak truth in love, not look down at the person and treat them like they're dirt, but we honor I love the Ouija board. I love going to get my cards read and tarot readings and all that stuff. And let me tell you something. You want to open yourself up to something and have more demons come in, go ahead. But see, Jesus is saying this. It's an abomination to me. It says it in Deuteronomy 18. It's an abomination 
because he knows that, that it's, it's idolatrous and you're bowing your knee to something other than Jesus Christ. And Jesus... it's free you can get a natural high it's way better than anything like that trust me for those of us who've been there we know it so you know I just want to encourage you I'm going to close with uh, Matthew 14 where Peter now Peter you know he was a wild man Peter had to get really <laughs> dealt with by the Lord but you know what I love about God God meets us all where we're at he didn't take Lord, are you kidding me? But, you know, I, the one day the Lord spoke to me and he said, why do I always get the blame? <laughs> I don't know, you have a point there, Lord. You know, but God, you know, help me through this. But I'm disappointed. I'm hurt. And so then I had to get redirected and refocus on the word and know that, all right, God, you've got my back. I know that you love me. I know that, that I can trust you. I'd rather serve the Lord even in the chaos than live in the world without him. I've done it, and that's not fun. Only God can give you a supernatural peace. Only God can do that. Uh, and, yeah, we need to be fanatical for Jesus. This, we cannot live lukewarm for him. You're either hot or you're cold, but if you're lukewarm, he'll, he, it says he's vomits you out of his mouth. That's because he knows what will help us. Like a parent wants to teach and train their child because you're, you're guiding them to help them, not harm them. And he's a, he's a perfect father. So here he was in Matthew 14. He's, uh, Jesus is walking on the water. And I love this portion because I'm encouraging you all today, before I pray, to walk on the water. To, to come out of the box, come out of the, the place of defeat, come out of the place of limitation. And come out of that boat that's trying to limit you from where you're going. Immediately, Jesus made in 22, I'll start with verse 22. I, I know I didn't give you that, sorry. Jesus made his disciples get into the boat, and, and, and he said to them, we're going to go to the other side. The Lord is telling you today, you are going yeah. to the other side. You are advancing. You are crossing over. You're not staying stagnant. You're not staying at this place. You are crossing over. And it says here, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up to the mountain to pray. Now, when evening came, he was alone. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea. Now, I love this. Tossed by waves, for the wind was contrary. It was hostile. How many times are we in that place? We're, cross, we're trying to get crossed over. Uh, Martin quoted the Red Sea situation. You know, here's the sea before you, the Egyptians behind you. And it's scary. You think like, God, oh, my God, Lord, I'm trusting you, but I didn't think it was going to be this way. I just thought that the sea was going to split. Well, it, it did. It did. But just trust me. And so we get afraid. We start looking at the circumstances. And then, so then when that happens, you've got to get your mind back on the Lord again. Wait a minute, Lord, you got this. I can't look at, at what's happening here. And so it says here, but the boat was in the middle of the sea, tossed by waves. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it's a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, hey, be of good cheer. Stop being afraid. It's I, don't be afraid. Stop it. Make me smack you. <laughs> and if Peter answered, it says, and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come on the water. He was getting all bold there. And it says here, and he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to Jesus. Now, here's where, but, like, this is what happens. But when he saw the wind was boisterous, 
He was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And so, so many of us have been there. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand. And I'm telling you, the spirit of the Lord is stretching his hand out to us. So many of us have said, Lord, I'm afraid. Where have you been? There's too much wind going on. There's too much, you know, happening around me. And the Lord's saying, grab my hand. And he said, oh, you little faith, why do you doubt? Why did you waver? And they got into the boat. The wind ceased. And they did. They got over to the other side. So, see, the Lord didn't rebuke and smack um, Peter. He, you know, he just said, hey, listen, you know, I'm going to help you with this. Don't settle for living in the boat. Don't allow your limitations. See, he was looking at it through his limited mindset. And the Lord wants us to know we are, uh, like I'm telling you, I'll say this to every time I minister, he's calling us up higher. He wants us to expand our vision. He wants us to take risks. Start ministering to people. Ask the Lord when you go into ShopRite, if you go into Macy's or Bloomingdale's or one of those stores, ask them, Lord, what do I have a word for that salesperson? Lord, what can I do for this person? Lord, that person needs healing. Let me pray for them. Why not? Don't be afraid. Don't even allow that fear and intimidation to hold you back. So the Lord wants you to be encouraged today. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pray, but I'm going to rehearse this again. That we, we repent for our lack of trust in the Lord, right? We renounce, let's say you're battling with fear. So today that's our focus. We're going to renounce fear. And it could be intim fear, you know, an intimidation. It could be fear of lack. It could be fear of being rejected. Fear. Whatever that fear is, we're going to renounce it. And then we're going to rebuke it. We're going to take authority over it. Now I'm, going to, I'm going to pray this corporately with you. And, and for some, that might be fine. Where you know that you're just, and, and you have to war with the word. You have got to meditate on the word. You must spend time daily with Jesus. You can't afford not to. You can't, if you're too busy, you're too busy. You have got to spend time with the Lord. He can save you a lot of time by spending yeah. time with him. And so, um, and then we'll pray. And then, and I'll, we'll take authority over it. But if you are struggling with that and you know there's something more there, come up. We'll just cast that thing out of you. Amen? Okay, so you can stand. Everybody alive? You all right? Yeah, in a minute. Uh, sure. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm so grateful for Jesus. I'm so grateful that I didn't have to live a life of terror and bondage and dread and regret. I'm so grateful that Jesus came to set the captives free. And so wherever, whatever you're struggling with, I, I want you to leave today with this hope and knowing that this is not your lot in life. Jesus wants you to live a life of victory, of happiness, of joy and peace. Even in the midst of trials, you can still have that steady eddy peace. Amen. So I'm going to pray and just, just go along with me if, if this is something that you're struggling with. So, um, so Lord, in Jesus' name, I ask you to forgive me for, for not trusting you. Forgive me, Lord, for yielding to fear and not stepping out in faith. I thank you, Lord, for your amazing love for me. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing love for me. And that you're always there for me. And that you're always there for me. And you're me. always extending your hand to me. You're always extending your hand. Because you simply love me. And Lord, I choose to surrender my will to you. I choose to yield to you. And I renounce a spirit of fear. Spirit of fear. I bind the spirit of fear. I bind the spirit of fear. And forbid it from controlling my life. Forbid it from controlling my life. I rebuke you, spirit of fear. I rebuke you, spirit of fear. And I command my freedom. I command my freedom. In Jesus, name. In Jesus' name. For God has not given me a spirit of fear, God has not given me a spirit of fear. but of power, love, and of sound mind. Power, love, and sound mind. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Of whom shall I be afraid? And when the enemy try to come upon my flesh. 
they stumbled and fell. The Lord is on my side. Whom shall I fear? So, Lord, I thank you for the power of your blood of Jesus Christ. And I thank you, Lord, that you have given me authority over the works of the enemy. And I thank you, Lord, for my freedom. In Jesus, name. In Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to just pray and take authority over spirit of fear. So now I speak to a spirit of fear in Jesus' name. And I command you, all fear and anxiety, spirits of fear, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to loose God's people today in Jesus' name. I command you to come out. I command you to loose them. And I command you to come out of their eye gate, their ear gate. Lord, I decree and declare that they will see the promise of God in a new way. I speak to a spirit of fear of death. The Lord says that you shall live and not die, and you will declare the glory of the Lord. I speak to you, spirit of fear of death. And I command release right now in Jesus' name. Now, if that's any of you, if any of you are struggling with this and you, you feel like you need extra prayer to come on up, I'm just going to ask you to come up now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And I'm going to ask the prayer team to come up too. 